Hello everybody. Uh, today's video is just going to be an extension of yesterday's video on how to land a tarpon step by step. On that video I kind of just went over verbally what to expect when you're fighting and, and attempting to land your first tarpon or maybe to help you resolve any issues that you had up to the point of landing that tarpon. Uh, Right after I finished filming that, I was able to uh, hook up to a tarpon and went through the whole process. So what I'm going to do is kind of take those five basic steps that I went over and apply it in visual form so you can actually see the process. And like I said, it's just kind of to help you out to understand what to expect when you get your first tarpon. So anyways, check it out. Now the first step that I went over was the organization or getting things prepared before you cast your first bait out. All right, because once that first tarpon takes that bite, uh, you don't have time to be messing around with stuff. You need to kind of have everything in order and in line. Now in this instance, uh, originally I was anchored up, had two baits out, and I was not having much luck. I was noticing a pattern just to my side of a, a column where I was continually seeing fish roll as well as being seeing a bubbles, air bubbles rolling up. And that to me kind of tends to mean that there's a bunch of, a school of tarpon laid up and they're basically just sitting in this one trench trough. So what I ended up doing was pulling up my anchor and trolling over that section. Now one of the aspects, and it'll come a little bit later on where this preparation really comes in, I'll throw that part in there so you'll be able to see what it is. So what I ended up doing was pulling the anchor. Um, usually I just throw stuff right up front there, but in this time I actually took the time, wound up all the extended rope and chain and anchor, put it in the back of my kayak in the back bucket so it was out of the way. And then I started my uh, pedal over and dragging those two baits over to where that I saw those fish sitting. So. That part of it, you're not, not really going to show too much, but that's what occurred before the bite happened. Now step two is the first 10 seconds of the fight, or what I was referring to as 80% of the success or failure will be on that first 10 seconds of that battle. The, the, the take of the bait and then the two to, two to five jumps, and then by that time, you're looking at 10 seconds, you survive that, you're 80% of your way to success. In my instance, what was happening is I had two baits out, basically, one to my back left, one to my back right, trolling forward, uh, going over that spot where I saw those tarpon rolling and laying up. The top, uh, my back right one is the one that got taken. All I heard was the, the, the curse splash and then my drag just going crazy so my initial steps were reach around grab the rod okay while i got the rod rod out of the holder i started tightening the drag and trying to follow the fish what it did is it took the initial jump when it grabbed the bait took another jump and cleared my back left line over that and then one more jump onto my left so i pulled the rod I was clearing it, following it, putting a little bit of drag, just a little bit, running that rod over my other two rods and getting it pointed out with no slack, okay? Once I got that last thing settled and I was fairly clear, hit the GoPro, takes a second or two to, to turn on and start recording and that was the bite where it physically started on my video. It just splashed and that was the third jump. After that point, that was my 10 seconds and by that point I knew I pretty much had them. I was 80% clear because I cleared all of his jumps and I was still on. So step two. Step three, the 30 minute battle. Okay, this is the uh, other 20% of the battle. The first 80% is that first 10 seconds while the next 30 minutes of it is just 20% and all that is is keeping steady pressure on that fish and just tiring it out. It's a 30 minute battle. 
no crazy cranking, no crazy drag, no crazy pumping and reeling, and no drastic movements. Just focusing on keeping that kayak centered at the fish so you're not getting perpendicular, making sure you're constant pressure on that hook because they have a hard mouth, and a lot of times that hook is just barely stuck in there, and just keep on moving forward, little at a time. No reason to hard yank because it'll just shoot your kayak forward. So just steady, go, go, go. Now this is also where I'll refer back to the this first step, which was getting organized. Because in this instance, I almost got spooled. Um, I talk about these tarpons in my earlier videos for this year, about some you get the uh, jump, 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 they jump and they're just running all over around you and under you and stuff. You have those, but then you have the other ones that'll jump, jump, and then head to Cuba. Well, that's what this guy was, is a bulldog runner, just a sprinter. It took off and I have a Conflict 6000 series with Braid and it basically took me down to my backing so where I could almost see down to the spool and it just didn't stop, okay? So the importance of the organization was is that I would have lost that fish 100% if I was not having my stuff prepared, meaning my cockpit area was cleared and my Mirage Drive, which is the most important thing, was in its socket and I could just get on those and start pumping right away. I would pretty certain if I was on a paddle kayak, I would have lost that fish. Now I, I probably would have been able to, to deal with it by try, uh, cranking down the drag, okay? And not letting it pull line and just make it start pulling the kayak faster. So you do have that adjustment, but it was over so fast. It took so much line so fast. It wasn't a thought out process. It was just boom, oh crap, I'm into the backing, okay? Then I tightened down a little bit, but then I was pedaling like crazy to catch up. Now, if I was still trying to clear my stuff and get the Mirage Drive in and clear out my other stuff, my line would have been gone and it would have been over. Or it could have slacked off and lost the fish. So that's really where the organization came in. Uh, the 30 minutes actually kicked in right about perfectly. Um, I calculated out that it was basically a 37 minute fight from bite to release. Uh, or pan grab, so it's right in that 30 minute zone. I'm letting them run. Oh, I'm running out of line. I'm down to my uh, backing, so I need to chase this one down a bit. <laughs> Stage four, which is getting to the point where that tarpon is broken, where you've broken that tarpon, where you can get to the point where you can pull back on that rod and turn that tarpon flat from where it's at, pull it backwards, pull its head straight up, flip him, make him control his head by making him turn around, okay? That's the point where you know that you're in control, it's so exhausted, now you're in that green zone for lipping that fish. Prior to that, I wasn't gonna deal with it. I just fought it, fought it, fought it, fought it, and fought it, fought it. Um, I figured the total fight was 37 minutes. So probably 35 minutes of it was just trying to wear that guy out and then a minute or two to finally get my hands on it. But you could check out the video and kind of take a look to see how I was able to control it just with that flimsy medium trout rod, and that's how exhausted that 100 pound tarpon was.
and the last part which is the hand grab and the release. Now you'll see is that I went for a couple of attempts, it took me a couple times because it's still a 100 pound fish. Trying to lip it um, in a kayak, you're not in the most comfortable position and trying to do it with one hand because I'm controlling the line and its head with my right hand and trying to grab it with my weak hand, my left hand and hold on to it, it would jerk a little bit. But that's the thing, it was so tired that I was able to control his head and not let him to shake off or swim away just by holding that leader because it was that exhausted. Then after the second or third try, I got locked on there and then I was slowly able to unwind and grab it with the two hands, got through that initial shake and then you can see how it just went complacent. It was just done, broken spirit. It's just basically dangling there, all right? And that's the point, took a couple pictures and then immediately right into the recovery, which is me holding its head in the water and just pedaling, 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 pedaling. Even though it's kicking a little bit, shaking its head a little bit, that's, it's not very much. And I know that it's very weak. So I keep going until I can see it swimming himself and then that it's really putting strength on that jerk going forward, not just side to side. And once I felt that he was overcoming my arm, then basically I let him go and he took off in front of me knowing that he's under his own power. And that's the good release. Let's get this guy revived. All right, he's starting to kick on me. And so that's a visual play-by-play -play of how the, the breakdown of a tarpon fight goes. Uh, hopefully that helps you out in case you're here on track to uh, land your first one. Uh, super fun, uh, but it's a big fish. It's a lot different than any other species out there. So you just gotta kinda have your ducks in a row. But hopefully that kinda helps you prepare for when it's your turn. So anyways, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, I'll see you next video. Bye. And after that, do you really wanna catch a tarpon? <laughs>